Okay, someone was asking me uh, and, and made, made a few comments about some of the concerns that they had. One being the, the shiny uh, wire and how the, the moon will affect it. And, and I know the moon will. I know you're going to get moonshine on this. Not the kind you drink. So I'm just going to tie quickly tie these on right very fast. Grab, a, grab another one. Drive it down. I don't even need to think, I don't even think I need to tie them on there, you know. I'm going to hook them to the wire a little bit, the branches. There you go. And then the final one over here. up the spots where the, the gates will be. Driving these little stakes just to help keep everything in place. Don't have to drive them down too far. There you go. That quick, that simple, that easy. You'll notice that I didn't, uh, I didn't replace the gate sticks. I guess I'll call these gate sticks and corner posts. I'm not even going to bother to tie on. Uh, well, maybe I can. The corner post. I don't really have to. Pen has a nice natural set to it. So now all I have to do is uh, get some birch tops and put it inside and figure out exactly where I'm going to place the trail camera when I come back later. And I'll probably go right behind, right behind you there. Might take out a couple of these little twigs here. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try birch tips at first. And I'm going to do another experiment with different baits for, for the snowshoe hair. Um, someone said they like bananas. And I heard that before. Never did try it. And a buddy of mine claims that uh, when he dumps the ashes... From his wood stove apparently the rabbits go nuts for the ashes so i don't know if there's something in in the ashes that uh, the rabbits are craving and, and maybe more so as winter goes on and they get more into a, a starvation state maybe there's something in there that they crave however uh we have a setup what i'm going to do now Put the tips inside clean up a little bit of the uh twigs and stuff around here that would trigger a um, a windy response from the trail camera uh because I, I want the only thing i want to uh, trigger the response is obviously is is going to be an animal walking uh past the trail camera whether it be uh a rabbit or a squirrel or pine martin or 
coyote, fox, weasel, moose, whatever. All right, so uh, yeah, I only tied on one of the, yeah, only tied on one of the corner posts. Didn't need to tie on the others, I don't think. Um, I will have to eventually make my uh, gate posts longer, get new gate posts and weave them in. But this is just an experiment for now. And uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it and see if we can get the rabbits to go to it. Normally when I make a, a pen set, I don't have it two feet high. My, my, my gate is probably only about yay high. And I hadn't had a problem with rabbits jumping over, over top of it. But normally I put uh, evergreens on the corners of my pens and then leave it a little bit more open inside. And, and I've always done that. I don't know if I'll have to modify this in any way. I don't know if the rabbits will go anywhere near it. But it's going to be interesting to uh, find out. And we're going to do that uh, later this evening, I guess. So now I'll go and I cut some birch tips. I'll pause the camera, cut some birch tips, and uh, put them inside. Yeah, I don't know exactly how that's going to work. But uh, it'll be interesting to, to find out. And uh, see how the rabbits interact with this pen. So now I just got to figure out a good trail cam location to capture all this. So anyways, thanks for watching this little experiment. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work out exactly. But I think uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to find out how the how do uh, rabbits react? Will they go inside the pan? Will they avoid it? Will they try to jump over it? We'll find out soon. So this is the final uh, setup for the for this evening. Only thing uh, left to do now is to come out and hang up my trail camera. And I think I have a, a good location as to where I want to put it. So we'll just uh, wait and see how this unfolds. Hopefully I can get you some real good uh, video of, of this pen set in action. So there was a moose here last evening or the evening before I'm not sure but I'm telling you what they don't pass up this this uh, red ozer dogwood that's them chewing on it and feeding on all, all the tips. When a moose passes by the stuff, it always, always, always stops to graze onto it. This time of year. Late season moose hunters, red or dogwood, that's the key. Okay, so right here I, I have a uh, coyote track. Okay. Not a big coyote, but uh, a coyote nonetheless. I can tell this by looking at the claw marks. I get a lot of questions asking me, or a lot of pictures sent to me, asking me to identify if it's a canine or a cat. And I'll show you a, a very simple way to, uh, to determine. Okay, so like a cat, it'll have four toe pads. One, two, three, four. And the heel pad. Now the heel pad of a canine is pointed. Whereas the cat comes up and has a little knob here, comes over and a little knob there. And tree bumps on the bottom. Okay. So a good way to determine whether or not it's a canine or cat is you go between the top two toes here. And, uh, you go between the top toe and the, and the, the toe on, on the same side. And you, you can lay something down like this, and I got to go down by the pad. And you do the same thing on the other side. And what you forms is an X. Okay? A cat, the X on a cat will look more like that. Because the, the toes are more across the, the front. More rounded. Alright, so a, a canine. Almost forms a perfect X. 
You guys see that? Okay, more red Ozer dogwood and a lot more moose sign. All right, and you can see where the moose came in and just chewed off the tops on all this red Ozer dogwood. You got the whole little area here, all the tops, all cleaned up. This time of year, the moose really hit this stuff hard. Find it, remember where you found it, and keep an eye on it for late season hunting. This was a personal goal of mine, to grow the channel without monetizing the channel, to uh, be larger than the population of my hometown of Stephenville. Here you can see I'm at 6,629 subscribers and the town of Stephenville. According to the last um, census, it is at 6,623 people. Okay, so I just turned off the uh, trail cam there, but I can see we've got some fresh rabbit buttons down there, and even inside the pen, and I see some tracks. So, uh, it looks like we had the rabbit in the pen last night. First night out, uh, we definitely had a rabbit all around the pen. And now we'll take the trail cam back and see what kind of footage we got. Hopefully we got some uh, some footage because the rabbits were definitely all around this pen last night. And uh, it appears that he was inside of it for a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, in case anybody's wondering why I, I didn't put out a, a lot of videos this fall with any big adventures... Well, <clears throat> back in August, we found out my wife had uh, an ovarian cyst. And by the time they got it removed in on the 22nd of October, it had grown to be the size of a basketball. So she had to have major surgery and an eight-week recovery, which, which her eight weeks was up, I think, on the 23rd of December after her surgery <clears throat> but just before that we had found out that uh, uh, the cyst was actually uh, cancerous now uh, the good thing is her doctor believes because she had a really good look when she was inside of her uh, the good thing is her doctor believes all the cancer was removed with the cyst however in case there's any free floating cancer cells in there they wanted her to do chemo and she starts her chemo on Thursday, the 7th of January. So uh, that is, that's why I, since the summer and, and the fall, I, I never went on any real big adventures, kind of doing little things like this in behind the house. Um, but, you know, she's gonna get through this in flying colors, I know that for sure. And, uh, you know, for everybody that knew and, and wished her all the best and stuff like that, much appreciated. It means a lot to us. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down now and see what we got got on trail camera. Uh, seems like the pen was a success on the first night. Here was the weather forecast for last night. As you can see, uh, there was very little wind. It was cloudy most of the night, or partly cloudy, but uh, during the time when the rabbit was uh, around the pen, it was mostly cloudy. So it's 3.10 and this is uh, me and my wife had just set out the trail camera. At 5.27, the first rabbit appears. He kind of skirts the edge of it, just sniffs around and says, you know, something's not right here, I'm, I'm getting out of here. 30 minutes later, there was another rabbit at uh, 5.57, and then he disappears. So the first two rabbits that showed up, whether it was the same rabbit or not, did not enter the pen. Now it's 11.22, and this guy here shows up, and right away, he'll enter the pen. 
you'll see uh, he'll go in at uh, 11.22 just before the, this video clip ends. He's at the entrance of the, the pen and inside. And seven minutes later, he's still inside. Now he's uh, inside chewing away. So it is now 11.29 p.m. And this, we'll call this gate, gate number one. He moved over to the left-hand side, and he'll exit through, because I've seen his, his tracks and a little bit of snow that we had. He exited through that gate there he's facing now. So gates one, and we'll call the other one two, were used. And now he just came in on the far gate. We'll call that gate three. And it's now 11.45. And he'll, when he goes to exit, he actually exits through the right-hand gate. He's here, he's gonna to try to jump over. Watch this, watch this. I was, I was worried about it. Bang all, bang into the fence. Everything's good, he found the gate, and away he went. So by 11.53, um, all four gates of the pen had been used. Now this rabbit comes up, and I don't know if it's the same rabbit or not, because uh, he didn't go straight through the gate, and he's sniffing around, sniffing at the, uh, the wire, it seems like. He'll lean right in here in a second and, and have a good old sniff on the, uh, on the wire disappeared at uh, 28 minutes after midnight this guy shows up <clears throat> looks like he's gonna make his way into the pen nope disappeared okay now we had a rabbit showed up from the opposite side Again, I don't know if it's the same rabbit. I don't know if this rabbit spooked the other rabbit. But now it's 29 minutes after midnight. And this guy will go straight into the pen. Here he goes. It is now... Well, maybe he didn't. Because there was a time lapse there of uh, a half hour. So now it's a little after 1 a.m. And the rabbit's inside the pen and chewing away. One oh two, I believe, uh, might be uh, might be it. I I can't remember now. I should have reviewed the uh, footage a little bit more before I started narrating over it. But uh, you can see the rabbit out there just hopping around like rabbits hop. Oh no, that's right. He did he did come back. So it's a uh, one twenty and straight into the pen. So. Um, like I said, all four gates of this pen were used in one night, the first night that I had the pen out here with the birch tips into it. I think, uh, I think this will work out really good, especially when I, I, uh, I modify what I've done to it a, a little bit. Get rid of those pigtails on my next one. I'm not going to join the mesh. I'll leave it, I'll leave it one 12 and a half foot long mesh. Oh, they, I think this is it. I think he's gone now for tonight. When he disappears from here, that's it. Uh, but yeah, this this will only get better f through the uh, modifications that I'm about to do. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, now I have snares set on the pen, so let's see what's going to happen tonight.